قد أفلح المؤمنون الذين هم في صلاتهم خاشعون You know, yeah, uh, to, uh, salah and the prayer, actually, I've been emphasized so many times, uh, you know, that the best action that believers do is no doubt the prayer. And as Mawla Farhai puts really, if you ask me that what is deen, I will, I'm not wrong if I say the prayer. This religion, actually, nothing is as important as the prayer, no doubt about salah. Uh, so that, actually, my, my teaching really is that how salah can make people near to Allah SWT. How salah is the best implementation of the iman. How salah can make your iman increase? How salah can is the best, uh, you know, action for your for your submission to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala? So salah basically is the training of the people to become like Ibrahim Al Islam in the Hanifiyyah, like his wife Hanif turning away from everything to Allah Subhanahu Wa Taala. Because in salah you turn away from, you don't do your work, you don't write, you don't play, you don't earn money. Nothing in salah you turn away from every single thing. You don't talk with your wife, you don't talk with your friends, not with your children. Turn away from everything. Even don't eat in salah. Don't drink. Even if somebody says salam, you don't say walaikum salam. Salah is the best turning to become Hanifi. Hanif. Turning away from every single thing. And then the salah is the best turning for Islam. Some mission. Like Allah, when Allah commands you to stand, you come, stand. When He asks you to bow, you bow. When He asks you to stand, you stand. When He asks you to go in sajda, you do sajda. You don't change it. And right order. It, if you change the order, in our submission. It is not possible for a believer to do sajda before the ruku. If you do sajda before the ruku you know, and, you, um, uh, and you make very nice sajda, it's not right. Why? Because you did not do submission. The salah is a good training of the submission. If submission does not happen, it is not salah. So, and these are clear the two major pillars of the Millah of Ibrahim Islam. Ibrahim, the Quran said, Millah Ibrahim Hanifa. Ibrahim Islam, the Millah has two, three pillars. And you know, two of them, one of them is Hanifiyah and the second Islam. Hanifiyah means to turn away from every single thing to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and Islam means that surrender to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So inshallah in this course and also in the life of uh, uh, Musa al-Islam's uh, coming to the mountain of Tur, I'm going to explain really how important uh, uh, the prayer is and also in the life of the experience of Ibrahim al-Islam when he said la uhibbul afilin, you know I don't love those who disappear and also in the life of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when, uh, uh, when the companies in the red, idha hazabhu amrun fazi alayhi salatu whenever he had any matter, serious matter, he used to take refuge to the prayer in the light of all those things, inshallah, I'm going to you know, make effort to explain the prayer properly. Because it, it, a prayer is not right, really. A religion is not there. People can talk about khilafah, about the state, about anything, what they want, really. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has sent the messengers to teach people how to pray properly. So that is a major part. And maybe if we have time, so in the, you know, in, in later, some in major fiqh of the salah as well, you know, those ahkam, those rulings where people do mistakes, I can explain. And also people have questions. And maybe also certain differences between the prayers of the men and women because people don't like the difference between men and women that pray. And I don't think it is insult of anybody. It really it is needed. And, uh, and I really have you know, uh, you know, proper uh, argument that in certain things, men and women should pray different. Not everything, but two or three things. They are so much clear for our teachings of the companions from early generation that you know, we, we, can, we cannot deny that. And also could it be possible if there are time you know, to, to explain certain rulings of tahara and purification of the women because many of these questions keep coming all the time and some, some because in, in the past women used to learn from their mothers and now neither mothers know these things, neither, you know, women, nobody knows really, many of very often. So, you know, it need, needed to be explained properly. So it could be, inshallah, also explain something, purification and wudu and tahara and special needs of the women if time is there. Yeah, no, I'm going to explain really the people think Salu Kamara Ayatum means uh, that uh, in every single detail, men and women should pray like, like me. This is not the meaning. Uh, if it is the meaning, the Prophet used to read loudly, he read it. should we read loudly behind him? If you pray as he prayed, he used to make loud, uh, uh, he should say Allah over loudly, should we say loudly? You know, think that there are so many details in his prayer, it is not meant. The meaning is that in you know, main parts uh, and also khushu, humility, and how to stand with fear of Allah SWT take. The real part of the Quran nobody, prayer nobody takes. The Quran says, Qadaf lahal mu'minun al-ladhi hum fi salatim khashiyun. The believers who do khushu, they are successful. But what we think the prayer of the Prophet is to raise the hand up to here. It is not his prayer. Whether you raise up to here or to there or this, it is not. Whether you put your hand up in the chest or on the stomach or below the, you know, navel, 
that really big thing. But when you stand, stand like him. Then, you know, when people write a book like Sifat al-Salat al al I don't like it. Because I think that the book has everything, but not the professional prayer. His prayer was not, not this, that, that thing. His prayer was a completely different thing. His prayer not this small thing. That people can differ. You know, if you put your hand here or there or put there or here, it doesn't really matter so much. But what matters really is how your heart is, how your concentration is. That's the prayer that makes a difference. So you know, this book, I don't like really. People should learn prayer from Bukhari, from Muslim, from Abu Dawud, from Timothy. Comprehensive prayer of the person, how you to stand, how you to do properly. From Quran, learn the prayer from the Quran. That's what should happen. But this minor thing that people think this is exactly what, how, what should be spaced between your two feet, you know, all those things, and how you sit and all, they are not a big, big thing. Whether you sit this way or that way, it's not going to make a big difference. But what makes a difference is the condition of your heart, concentration, devotion, you know, fear of Allah, that's what really prayer is. Prayer is khushu.